Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unpublic. I'm really excited today for the guests that we have on. But for those of you who do not know what Unpublic is, so Unpublic is a show that discovers details about a post made public by our guests. And then that kind of gets, give us a little bit of a clue into their personal experience as a public figure. And during the show, um, Unpublic has randomly decided and chosen two posts that were made public on the guests' social media platform. So it will go from different social media platforms. The guests are not aware of those posts, but the posts will pop up and they will go ahead and provide their answers to the questions about the posts. While they're doing so, they're also going to be going through a general knowledge quiz game. If they fail to answer three of the four questions, they will make known to everybody the one unpublic information, which is their most embarrassing moments. That's my favorite part, the ending. So make sure you stay tuned till the end. So we have award-winning actor, director, producer, and speaker. A man originally from the beautiful country of Haiti. And as an actor, he has appeared in major television projects such as Fox's Star Trek, The Next Generation, VH1 Single Ladies, and Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns. And recently, he's in films such as the Irwin Brothers' I Still Believe, the Kendrick Brothers' Overcomer, and much more. And as a director and producer, he released Maddie the Discovery, in which he also acted in. Can you imagine acting, directing, producing? It's a lot, but he did it all. And as a speaker, he speaks internationally on topics that impact family relationships and the true essence of keeping Jesus Christ at the center of everything. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. Cameron Arnett. <laughs> How are you, Cameron? I am well, but I don't know after all that, I may not be sure that I want to answer any of these questions. You are too much. Oh my gosh, this is like on the spot. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't be anything crazy. Okay, so we're going to start off right away with our very first post, okay? So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to share my screen so you can be able to see what it is. Hopefully you're not nervous. No, it's good. Let's let's see what I got. <laughs> so wow, here we tell go. us a little bit about this post. Ah. Uh, <laughs> First of all, do you even remember what you were saying yeah. at that moment? I don't know what I was saying at the moment, but <laughs> uh, yes, I remember this. This is um, um, Pastor Ed, uh -huh. um, and we are in Columbus, Georgia, okay. and this is a, a men's group that he has, a fabulous pastor. Mm -hmm. um, he had me come down, uh, Church on the Trail. I believe it's called, and uh, we were dealing with the men and what their calling is and and, and the, the uh, perspective of understanding that if they don't answer the call and then where's the church going to go? What's what's going to happen right. to the lives of the people? Right. And that if the church does not have any pushback uh, in the sense of what it uh, presents to the world and to the world within the church, then you know, um, we're at fault and, 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 and um, we are allowing the, the lives of people to go astray. And so men are called to be, you know, the church by itself is called to be the, the, the bearers of the truth, the, the foundation of the truth. Right, and so especially right. as men, we have an authority that God has given us on, on the earth. You know, now that that's neither male nor female, but as we look at, at God's creation, there right. is a specific authority that he gives to the men to blaze the trail for Christ to to really answer a call and so as men we need to understand uh and, and take up our, uh, our responsibility to, to do that okay so you were there as a speaker or you were on correct a I was there as a speaker okay. I was there as a speaker 
um, okay. to just bring an, an understanding of, of where we are in these times mm. and um, what we have as our responsibility as men to, mm. to the church and to the world. Okay, interesting. Your off-topic question, I do see also sometimes that you post a lot about your family, either mm -hmm. family, uh, real family or family in love. So tell me at a our next barbecue or dinner, <laughs> what is that one meal that would not be missing? I want to know. Wow, you know, my, my, what does that look like? My wife is a salmon special. Ah. Okay. okay. She makes such a great salmon that I have stopped eating it elsewhere. Ooh. Because nothing matches. Oh wow. Yeah. And you know, it's it's crazy. You know, you know, I, we have a, a running joke in in our in our household that okay. she puts restaurants um um out of business because Ooh. every time we go somewhere and, and <laughs> we find a great meal, he's mm -hmm. like, you can see her wheels turning. And she's like deciding what 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 ingredients are in this. She loves to cook, yeah. and so oh. um, she goes home and she duplicates to perfection mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it is that we've eaten. And sometimes it's a lot better than what we wow. got at the restaurant. And so I I say all the time, are you are you gonna put another restaurant out of business? Because then we won't <laughs> we won't need to go here anymore, you know. Right. But, but there's a, we have a staple, man, with the salmon. I I don't really eat it anywhere else because she just does so well at it. And 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 people that know us put a demand on her whenever they you know oh, if, wow. if there's gonna be like a, a a pot blessing kind of a, a thing that we go to uh -huh. requesting the salmon. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome by the way a shout out to bj arnett she's yes, the bad guy she's the bomb she's, oh my God, she's a awesome. little better than him i'm just kidding but <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the 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 woman that god gave me so i have no issues with the accolades man she is right. on another level she's awesome they're both a great couple together and they love sharing all these cute pictures on facebook i'm like mm-mm <laughs> but it's really nice. So are you ready for your number one quiz question? So this is general knowledge, people. We want to test Cameron <laughs> general knowledge. So what is the closest planet to the sun? Oh, the closest planet is Mercury, right? Mm, okay, Mercury. I'm going to put that I'm, on I'm, what I'm you gonna, put. I'm going to stick with that, Mercury, right? <laughs> okay, you're sticking with that, all right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next up, let's go to our second post. <laughs> See what when you said that, I, I'm I'm just wondering how controversial are you gonna go? Because sometimes, <laughs> you know, I deal with the family, I deal with always with Christ, but sometimes, you know, every once in a while there's something that happens in, in, yeah. in societal issues that right. I that I address. So, you know, um right. so it right. makes people a little uncomfortable to tell the truth. Yeah, no, 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 don't <laughs> worry. I, I, I toned it down. I'm hoping you'll be coming for a second episode so we can go oh, over awesome. deeper. I, I, least... I, I love the format. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. At least I want people to be introduced to you and I'm sure they'll want to see more. So, so I don't know if you remember this day <laughs> what you were doing. Yeah. It's like you're on a trail track. I'm like, what is going on? Oh, that is so funny. Well, you know what's funny about that? Before we even deal with what I was doing, uh -huh. what's so funny about that is that I've had several people contact me. Oh my God, you know, you're on a train track. That that is that's so um um uh, irresponsible. And I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, people go off, man. Oh wow. And they, but you know what's weird is that I find that people who know you know you, and yeah. people who don't know you make all kind of assumptions. Right, so right. Number one, it's a dead train track. Mm. Trains don't run on those tracks. Okay. Right. And so, mm. and so for, for someone who knows me, they, mm. they should know that I, I don't <laughs> do something that's not safe. Right. right? I'm correct. Okay. Uh -huh. I mean, the the my my entire mode of operation is mm. doing what is right. But um okay. actually we we were doing a a, a photo shoot. Mm. Um, and one of the, the photographer really is the one that said, Hey, why don't you go ahead and, you know, you know, sit here and, and do this. And, and, it, and, and again, for me, my first thought is to look up onto the heavens. Mm. My first thought is to worship God. 
Right. My first thought is to, you know, uh, look into the eyes of the creator who created me. And so what, what's happening in, with me right then and there is that I am taking the time mm. to, to reflect, to look upon and to ponder um, my creator. Right. Oh, and um, man, I, I that that that's one of my favorite pictures because mm. it allowed me, while they're taking pictures, to really be about him, and right. um, um, just that time of worship. So yeah, that was that was that was that was a fun one. Mm, it got, I love it, it. It, it. got a little controversial. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the comment section. I was like, ay ay ay. Okay. <laughs> way too deep like come down uh yeah. you know he's in the moment you know i don't think they're even thinking about that hey, I, not, well i didn't have to at all it's a dead train track but but also the bottom line is that even if it was a live one mm -hmm. do you really think that i'd be laying there right while a train is coming exactly i mean <laughs> not you know it's a photo shoot so there are people all around mm, and it's public yeah. There are people watching us doing what we do. Right. right? <laughs> All of that is going on at the same time. So it's just mm -hmm. funny that, that people assume those kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, it's it's out there. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. And also, I think someone mentioned your beard, that you didn't have a beard on there. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, since Overcomer, uh -huh. most of what people have wanted me to do Mm -hmm. Is people is 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 um, um character you see me with a beard whatever yeah, and yeah so and so because of that I I rarely get an opportunity to not have it on and so mm -hmm. to do for the shoot I decided to mm -hmm. shave the whole thing off because normally oh, wow. before I got back into the acting I would really I I didn't have hair on my face all mm -hmm. right and so um now I have it most of the time because it's easier to shave it than to grow it oh, so okay. I end up now always having it and depending on what people want me to look like during uh, a film I'll shave it or do whatever I, I need to do but um but my 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 old norm uh -huh. was to not have any hair so when people see me without hair on my face I mean I look like like 10 12 years younger oh, that kind wow. of thing so it's always <laughs> kind of kind of you know trippy like who is this yeah okay <laughs> You know, don't worry. You and your wife, you still have this black dog crack going on. You guys still look very young. So that's a very good thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then um, tell me, what is one thing you wish someone had told you before you got this platform that you have? What is that one thing you wish you know you knew before? I wish I knew that... Um... People wouldn't understand it all the time. It is still a ministry. Mm. You no, know, people mm. think that because you're on television, because you do film, because that's the arena, that mm. it's not a ministry. People don't understand that I was that my wife and I pastored for 18 years prior to this. Oh, wow. And that if it wasn't God who called me to this, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm. He has made it, I mean, extremely known to me. Right. By by so many different things, one of which is he told me to even go. The first time that that I was even asked to come to audition for something while I was pastoring, I turned them down. I said no. Wow. It, was, it, it it took God two weeks to get me to say yes, <laughs> and that's what even got me to uh, to 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 acting again. I, mm. Acting is not something that is my 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 go to. Um, I am a preacher of the gospel. I love teaching the word of God. I love, you know, uh, elaborating on the word of God and, right. and bringing knowledge of God to people. And right. so what this has done for me is that it elevated the platform. And so mm. now I speak internationally. Now I speak right. all over the place because now mm. people know me as an actor. But mm. acting is not the first thing. It is it is out of obedience to God. And I and people don't realize that. And, and sometimes because they don't, they assume that you like to be in the limelight. They assume that mm. it's about pride and ego and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And, and what happened? No, you're no longer pastoring. You, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a calling of God. And, and actually, mm. I, I probably teach to more people now than I ever have. Oh, wow. Do you think it's, obviously, I always believe that 
also whichever way you're able to share information that God can utilize you to still share his word in different means. So mm-hmm. if you think for you, it's that format right now with the acting, you're still able to do the same preaching, but in a different format. Oh, sure. Okay. Think about it. When, you, when you're dealing with, even with what we're doing right now, okay? Mm-hmm. When you're dealing with cyberspace, mm-hmm. you're going all over the world to people who would never come in the four walls of the church. Right, this right. is this is powerful. What we're doing right here mm-hmm. is so meaningful and powerful yeah. that some people don't, don't don't get it, but mm-hmm. you 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 are putting something on the 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 airways that have a life after you leave the earth. Yeah. You're yeah still true. still going to be ministering to people. And mm-hmm. so through these films, and you know, we were both in, in Don't Say My Name together. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. you know, you know that around the world, people are getting the message out of right. that movie. And mm-hmm. not only are they getting the message out of that movie, we've now been able to travel mm-hmm. to places, you know, around the world that you, we would have never gone had it not been for the movie. And right. so it's it's a powerful medium. You know, when you talk about tell our vision, it, you, you are programming God's, you're programming people, you're telling God's vision around the world to places mm-hmm. that you'll never, you may never step foot into, and you may meet people in heaven that you minister to through a film, through a, a, a podcast, through a Zoom, right, right. Um, and, and you know, you get, you get, you know, uh, God gives you credit for that because mm-hmm. you were the one who, who uh, spoke the word to that, to that soul, man, and yeah. I, I, I what, what an opportunity. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. I love that you elaborated on that. Okay, so your question number two. Uh (laughs) I better get what is the world's largest continent? Africa. Africa is the largest continent. I'm gonna put it down. On the planet. Now, see, I can go. To, <laughs> is that your go. final answer? Yes, it is. Okay. No? Am I incorrect? The answer is yet. Until <laughs> the end. <laughs> no, at the end, we'll know whether or not his general knowledge is the best. Um, so, um, okay. Actually, you know, you're wearing this thing. This was the thing I'm going to go through next. I have okay. the t-shirt myself. <laughs> I know. Uh, you got you got the first you got the first generation. This is the second generation. Oh you need to go ahead and get to yourself a second generation shirt. Oh yeah, yeah. I need to oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so tell me a little bit. Can you expand on this? How did it come about? What what's what's the update with this one? Price over career. That's what mm-hmm. it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um when I was in Hollywood. You know, I, again, I was in secular films and, and TV before mm-hmm. all of this, you know what I'm saying? So when I was in California, uh, I had just come from Toronto, Canada, doing a movie of the week. And my manager said, hey, they want you to see you for the series, blah, blah, blah. They, they're really high on you on it. And so I, I, I went in, I auditioned, ended up mm-hmm. getting the role. It would have been my first starring role, my own, you know, uh, series out of, out of L.A. Yeah. And um, we were about to sign the contract, my, my manager and I. And uh, they called and said, oh, by the way, we need Cameron to do partial body nudity, you know? And by that time I was a Christian. I was, you know, mm-hmm. I wasn't about, you know, to compromise Christ. And mm-hmm. so I made the decision that I couldn't do it. And then and I wouldn't do it. And they, they say, came back and they said, you know, um, we'll give you a body double. You won't have to do the nudity, just do the acting. Mm-hmm. And I go to sign again. And the spirit of the Lord kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, you have to shun the appearance of evil because people will think that mm-hmm. it's you. Right. And so I let it go. Exactly. And I didn't know at the time that it was a Christ over career moment. I that's just mm-hmm. how I live. That's just that's just what normal to me. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know that it was going to be such a major deal, even within the body of Christ. And I didn't know that I was sowing a seed then that God was really having me sow a seed of my career to, for what he's doing in my life now. What mm-hmm. he has done on this Christian side is beyond my wildest dreams, mm-hmm. and we're just getting started. And so yeah. I'm extremely grateful. But that's where Christ's World Career comes from, is mm-hmm. to make decisions that Christ would make, as opposed to what the world tells you to make. Right. Right. And so I did that, and all hell broke loose, lost everything, mm-hmm. you name it, everything unraveled. Wow until this point of where we are today. And so Mm -hmm. while I was um, giving my testimony at a festival, Mm -hmm. I realized 
that um, many Christians would have not made the same choice. Oh, wow. And so it became an aha moment. And mm -hmm. as I was interviewed by, uh, especially out of uh, uh, Overcomer, um, a, a lot of different um, um, interviews and, 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 and secular even uh, uh, papers, whatever, um, interviewed me and the, the through line became Christ over Korea. Oh, you made a, a decision of Christ over your career. I mean, and, and it was just like this massive thing that everybody came to realize even before I did. Mm -hmm. And I was on an interview and they said, man, this is like, wow, that, well, that that's the message. Mm -hmm. And it became the message. Oh, wow. You know? And, and so now I go to churches, I go to festivals, um, and we kicked off a national campaign out of New York. And then, you know, we went to Houston. We went to, you know, we're scheduled to be in, 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 in Indiana uh, coming up, going to be in L.A. coming up, um, um, working on Florida and Tennessee. And, and so it's, it, God is just breathing his breath on this thing. Right. And, and the whole point is to call the church back to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because we should be living in such a way as to we no longer have a choice. He makes the choices for us. Because once we choose right. him as Lord and Savior, that's mm -hmm. it. From that point mm -hmm. on, he's the commander. Yeah, and so exactly. we have to learn that there is a difference between going to church and following Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. getting, you know. And, and so those that, that's really the main thrust of, of, of the ministry mm -hmm. of Christ over Korea is getting the church to understand that God is calling us to a life of, of such obedience, such radical obedience right, that right. he is so welcome in our hearts and our homes and our lives mm -hmm. that he can manifest everything that he ever wanted to. All he wants us to be is a holy, righteous people. And if he will do, if we will do that, then mm -hmm. he can go ahead and promote, declare, fulfill, right. manifest. Right. But mm -hmm. He wants a sinless living being. Mm. you know and um so we need to have that that understanding that's and that's what we do whenever we go anywhere now is to just call the church it's called to the church and to call the world out of the church and to only have the christ heaven the holy spirit leading and guiding the church and that's what this is all about oh wow i'm glad and i'm glad you've had some good reactions you know like you said you've been yes. able to go to different places so that's really good well, you know, what's, here's what's here's what's funny, uh, and and I say, I, well, it's ironic because mm -hmm. the reality of it is, you would think that people are trying yeah. to keep away from God. No, they just didn't know that they weren't as tight with God as they should be. Mm. As as we go, you can see the light turn on, and people mm -hmm. realize, wait a minute, there's a there's a greater, there's a higher life, there's mm -hmm. a, a a better relationship that I can have with God than what I've been mm -hmm. having. And I yeah. want that relationship. I just didn't know that I didn't have it because they, <laughs> because, you know, we're, we're all, we are all church goers. We, mm. we, we go to church on Sunday, Wednesday, whatever, mm -hmm. and we pray and, 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 and we read our Bible and mm. we think that that is the end and be all of it all. And the reality is that, no, you are, he sees you no different as, as Jesus himself, as he walked the earth, you have right. to see yourself as not different than Jesus. And when you do that, you begin to understand that the Holy Spirit that works in you mightily wants to produce, duplicate the same kind of son. And, 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 and that's the whole point of the fivefold ministry, to get us to the full measure and stature of Christ unto the perfect man. But we never even have that aim because we never even hear that kind of a word because mm -hmm. faith comes by hearing. And when people mm -hmm. hear it, all of a sudden, they, they rise to the occasion because yeah. it's really been what they've wanted all along. It's mm. just that they've never been called up higher to that place. And so yeah. Yeah, it's, been, it's been very rewarding because we haven't had any pushback from the church. Mm. Um, anybody who allows us to come in to speak, um, we haven't had any any pushback at all. The people want Jesus and they want to yeah. be like Jesus. Yeah. You know, um, they mm. just never knew that they could be. That's really amazing. Like you said, sometimes we don't realize that there's there's a tightness that we don't have we're there within the moment but it's like there's something more that we're just not we we haven't tapped into that mm -hmm. we think we're perhaps already there correct just and that and that's the worst thing and that's what religion does when mm, you think you're already somewhere yeah. then you can't get to where you're trying to actually be yeah. um because you already think that you're there mm -hmm. and so you're like a dog you know kind of chasing his tail and and, and so mm -hmm. you you don't really understand but once you realize what there really looks like, mm 
Mm. What there really is, you realize how far, but the yearning that we found in people's hearts is, mm. is such a blessing. It's not that they don't want to. Um, they never realize that the epitome of following God is mm. obedience. As mm. a matter of fact, Jesus describes loving him as obeying him. Mm. And so we say we love Jesus, but Jesus defines what loving him is. And right. that love is called obedience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. I'm glad. You know, I wish we could continue this conversation, <laughs> but that, but that's really that's awesome. I mean, see, like I said, you have to come on again. Yes, I'm from Blake. Anytime, maybe anytime. season two, huh? At any time. I guess the 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 uh thing that I, I, I'm concerned about mm -hmm. is that if I come if I come when I come back again, mm -hmm. I know you're gonna make those questions harder. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see first if you're gonna even get these ones right <laughs> before we look into the other ones. Okay, so let's segue into quiz question number three. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How, this is a multiple choice question, making it a little bit easier. Okay. How many teeth does an adult have? You have A, oh. 26, B, 27, C, 32, or D, 34? 32. All right, moving on. <laughs> Okay, so this time now, um, I wanted you to go ahead and you kind of already went through this. I, I really want my guests to be able to give an advice to three types of people in their industry because I'm going to be having guests from different industries. So I, I have these three types of people that I would like for you to speak to. So the first person is kind of similar to your story, someone who is having a hard time choosing versus the role like the role versus their values and their beliefs. Mm. What would you say? Uh, I will say that, you know, you have to commit yourself to your creator, to your God, to your mm -hmm. Savior, your Lord. Um, there isn't a career, a path that's worthy mm -hmm. of you losing your soul. Mm -hmm. And there isn't a more kinetic, on fire, <laughs> positive, vibrant life mm -hmm. than than obeying God. It is exciting yeah. to <laughs> obey God. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, every fiber of your being right. is, you can is, is, mm -hmm. is like bouncing all over the place when you <laughs> obey God because it's 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 scary to the flesh. It's scary mm -hmm. to, you know, you, you don't really know what may or may not happen. And regardless of what happens though, you will never have a track record of watching God be right. the God of the Bible mm -hmm. um, without obedience. You know, mm -hmm. it's not until you obey God to the point of obeying him, causing you to become in some, or, or be put in some kind of predicament that only he can get you out of. Right. That you see the God of the Bible. Right. And we all want to see the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody that obeyed him did, the end result wasn't necessarily what they thought it would be, wanted it to be, mm. but whatever it was, that's where God was. And we read after them and uh, they're, they're, it's written for our example. We read after them and we see that them obeying God put them in a crazy situation, mm. but then God showed up. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, and, 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 mm. and, it, and it's exciting when God shows up, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> And, yeah. and the things that's happening in, in my my life, my wife's life, you know, um, it's we're watching God show up, you know, mm -hmm. because we're making the decisions that would um, derail us if it wasn't God mm -hmm. having to make those decisions. And if it wasn't pro-Christ, um, mm -hmm. then that deliverance and that that massive aspect of him just showing up. Is what we yeah. how we live, and so yeah. it's uh, it's a very exciting thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know that definitely, especially first of all, pertaining to the other thought that you said, I was reminded of how we were created, like our creator. There's something within our bodies, within our beings, within the way we're we're formatted 
that mm -hmm. when we're connected to our creator, like you said, it's like this jolt, like this, yeah. it's like our body comes to life because we, we recognize who is helping us, who is in mm -hmm. us, who is with us, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's this similar thing because that person literally created every aspect right. of us, you know, and it's, it's just, that's the way we're able to connect to God. And I love that. I love that you're, you're showing that also through the victories that we have for, with Christ, we're able yes. to experience that in our bodies. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and again, all the victories are not necessarily always, um, like I said, the way that we want to. We sometimes, mm, you know, yeah. he's a deliverer and sometimes we don't want to be delivered. We don't get want to get into any situation that we have to be delivered from. Mm, and it's one right. thing to, to be the reason why you have to be delivered, but it's another thing to obey God that brings into a situation where mm. he must deliver you. Because he yeah. cannot deny himself. Yeah, he likes to, like I said with my sister, God likes to show up. He likes to <laughs> do his thing. <laughs> Make sure everybody yeah. sees how big he is, how awesome he is. So I thank God for that. And then the second person, what about this person who is trying to break through in their career? What would you say to that person? I would say after you solidify your um your obedience to God after you are you are definite that you will not compromise Christ the second thing that you have to do is that you have to be excellent at your craft mm. we must give God excellence to work with yeah. the super yeah. is on the natural mm -hmm. okay and so he's super all by himself mm -hmm. but what kind of natural are you giving him you right. know and so there, there are people who who just want to achieve certain things but they haven't spent time solidifying the excellence of their craft mm. I'm the very best that you can be at whatever it is that you do mm. you know especially when you are called and anointed for it um mm. and and God has has given you those gifts and those talents man that just come naturally mm -hmm. certain people that have a work ethic surpass people who are talented because they give so much effort to the training of whatever talent they have mm. so imagine if you had talent that was given by God and you had that same work ethic though to something that you were naturally gifted anointed for how, yeah. how excellent would you be yeah, okay exactly. and I, I would say that please concentrate on, on be, be being excellent at, at whatever it is because you're actually giving yourself back to God doing mm -hmm. all things that's unto the Lord you're giving it yourself back to God because you're saying here's what you gave me and I'm going to multiply it and give it back to you in a greater way right I love that and then what about this person? This is the person that feels like it's too late for them to start. Ooh. What would you say? It is never too late. You know, the example that we have of that is mm -hmm. Samson. Samson, you know, in his in his dying day, did more than he ever did while he lived. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And so it's never too late to be used by God from the point of mm -hmm. which you give God. God will use you to the intensity to which you give yourself to him. And mm -hmm. so in your latter years, I don't care whether you're 80 years old, it is not too late. If you will fire up for God, mm -hmm. fire, obey him with an intensity, he's going mm -hmm. to take whatever years you have left mm -hmm. and he's going to make something miraculous out of it. I mean, think about it from this perspective. Jesus lived for 33 and a half years as right. we, we, we right. read scripture. All right. And, mm -hmm. and, he what we know of him is the last three and a half years the whole uh, yeah. up until you know from from zero to 30 is True. kind of kind of obscure right right mm -hmm. what he he did all of what he did all and, and the bible says that there aren't enough books that could be written about all that he did <laughs> we're talking about three and a half years oh wow all right and mm. so um Gosh, you know, if you if you have if you give if you give God 10, 10 good years, what could he do with 10 good years? Exactly. You no, know, yeah. totally, you know, dedicated to him. What could he do with mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you're still breathing, it's not late. Well, at all. Old, man. Yes. And, okay. and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, of course. We're all grateful to be still breathing for yes, sure. Yes, indeed. Uh, question number four. This is our last question. So, <laughs> this one. Okay. Um, name three. Oh, 
of the six actors who played the role of James Bond? Three. Mm -hmm. of, the, of the how many actors? There six. There were six, six of them. Okay, I can name Sean Connery, which was one of my favorites. Daniel Craig, which was the last one, one of my favorites. Um, Timothy Dalton played him as well. Roger Moore played James Bond. Um, I believe the 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 uh, James Bond character was actually the the very first one. It was written for James Mason, and I, mm -hmm. I don't think he did it. But um, Sean Connery is the one who did it. I think was was uh, uh, the one who took took over that role. But I think I've named at least four. Am I correct? Yes. All right. <laughs> wow. Well, you know your stuff. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go through, ladies and gentlemen, and see whether or not Cameron Arnett has gotten at least three of the four questions correctly. Otherwise, this is my favorite part. He's going to share with us his most embarrassing moments. Can't wait. But let's see first if he's gotten it correctly. Which planet is the closest to the sun? Your answer was Mercury. Correct. <laughs> okay. Next question. What is the largest continent in the world? Your answer was Africa. Incorrect. Oh, really? Asia. Asia is the largest continent in the world. Oh my goodness. I did not know that. Yeah, it is the largest uh -oh. one. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> one down. <laughs> Next question here. We had how many teeth does an adult have? A, we had 26, B, 27, C, 32, and D, 34. Your answer was C, 32. Correct. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. You know what? This question may have saved you. Uh, this very last question about name three of the six actors who played James Bond. <laughs> so I think it kind of saved him, especially the fact that he named four and they were all correct. So you had Sean Connery, you had Daniel Craig, Timothy Dalton, you had Roger Moore, and then you were missing George Lazenby. Lazenby? Mm, don't know oh, that yeah. one. Mm -mm. He was on the list too. Oh, wow. Oh, you were so lucky. You just, oh, you would have heard the most embarrassing things. People, people, I feel so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the most embarrassing thing is that I thought it was Africa and not, and not Asia. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? Go look it up. But, you know, prepare yourself for the next on public show. I'm going to make it harder. But, I, have, um... I, have to go, I have to go study trivia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, watch a whole bunch of trivia. But definitely, that is the end of our show. Uh, I just wanted to let people know how they can contact you. So obviously, there is your website, CameronArnett.com, correct? Yes. yes. Uh, you, okay. They can follow me on IG, uh -huh. Cameron Arnett Actor. And please correct. go to IG and, and fo follow me, Cameron Arnett Actor, and also on Facebook at Cameron Arnett Actor. So um, okay. that's, that's the, the extent of my social media, other than <laughs> what other people handle for me, and I have no clue. Okay. Yes, he does have a management company. You know, I saw a Pinterest account. Do you even do Pinterest? I, I don't Pinterest. personally. I mean, okay. I mean, you know, we, you know, you, you know, we have a wonderful, phenomenal team, right? Uh, right. And and so mm -hmm. I, I do have some great, great people that are way mm -hmm. better than I am at, <laughs> at ninety nine percent of what I do. Okay. And so it's really uh, them that that they do the work, and and um, right. I'm, just, I'm just kind of the face of it. So. Yeah, um, and I thank them. They're the ones I, I communicated with to get you on the show. So that was really cool. Very smooth, very good. Everything worked out perfectly. Um, but overall, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for, thank you for having on, me. On public. Next yes. time, we're going to get some more <laughs> interesting stuff from Kim and Arnett. But for now, we're done. Thank you all for watching.
Uh, stay connected with Run Public, and also if you have any suggestion, anyone you think would be great for to be a guest on Run Public, let us know as well. But otherwise, stay connected, and I will see you all for our next episode of Run Public. Thank you. Thank you.